All right. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Today we're going to go back and do some um, some fun solving of compound inequalities. All right. Now, um, what is a compound inequality? Well, basically, it's just two inequalities considered at the same time. Now we have two types. Type one, we could have an or compound inequality. Or type two, we could have an and compound inequality. All right. We call these conjunctions. In fact, actually, this one is called a conjunction, and later on we'll talk about or as being something called a disjunction. All right. Now, let's first focus on the or compound inequality. The or compound inequality is simply a compound inequality in which at least one of the individual inequalities is satisfied in order for the compound inequality to be true. So take a look at this. So I say, I want you to solve this compound inequality. But I also want to write my answers in interval notation. All right? All right. So I've got 3x plus 5 is less than negative 16, or 8 minus 2x is less than 13. Well, all you're going to do is solve each inequality individually. And from there, you're going to put your two answers together and consider them both at the same time. All right. So on the left, I'm going to have 3x is less than negative 21 by subtracting the 5 across. Divided by 3, I get x is less than negative 21. On the other hand, if I sub uh, solve the other inequality, subtracting 8 from both sides, I get negative 2x is less than 5. So x is, what is it, what is it? Yes, that's right, greater than negative 5 halves. Okay. Now, so my two choices are x is greater than negative 5 halves or x is less than negative 21. If I put these two answers on a number line and compared the inequalities, let's see, negative 21 would be somewhere over here. Negative 5 halves, well that's negative 2 and a half, so that would be over here to the right. Okay. The first inequality, x is less than negative 21. Well, because that's exclusive, I put a circle at negative 21, but I leave it empty. Now, what numbers are less than negative 21? Anything to the right, or I'm sorry, blah, 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 to the left of negative 21. Okay. On the other hand, for x is greater than negative 5 halves, that one is also exclusive, so empty circle, but I shade to the right. Now, <clears throat> for an or inequality, compound inequality, I only need one of these shaded regions to be satisfied. Which, meaning, if I pick a number out of this left shaded region, that's okay. Or if I pick a number out of the right shaded region, that's okay. As long as my x's come from either shaded region, I'm okay. All right? So this is my final answer. There are actually two shaded regions that would be satisfied with this or compound inequality. Less than negative 21 or greater than negative 5 halves. Finally, in interval notation, again, interval notation is just a lazy man's number line. For the first shaded region, the shading starts on the left at negative infinity and it ends in the right at negative 21. Since it's not including negative 21, I put a parenthesis. On the other shaded region, it starts at negative 5 halves, exclusive, so parenthesis, comma, it goes all the way to the right forever, so to infinity, again with the parenthesis. Now, because I have both, I have two different solution sets, I say that it's the first solution set united or union with the second solution set. All right, so negative infinity to negative 21, yin yin, negative 5 halves to infinity, all exclusive. <clears throat> Let's do another example. All right, in the next one, I've got 7x minus 16 is greater than or equal to 26, or 21 minus 4x is greater than 3. Again, solving this first one, I get 7x is greater than or equal to 42, so x is greater than or equal to 6. Or... On the other hand, I get negative 4x is greater than, well, 3 minus 21 is negative 18, so x is less than 9 halves, okay? Again, if I want to consider these on a number line, I would put 
let's see, six and nine halves. Ooh, nine halves, what is that? Golly, that's, I think that's what, four and a half? Is that right? I think so, right? So four and a half is smaller than six, and so he has to go to the left, whereas six is on the right. Again, I want to just put two circles at nine halves and at six. Should the six be inclusive or exclusive? That's right, it's inclusive, so I'll color it in. Greater than six would be to the right. All right. Now for the next one, x is less than nine halves. Again, that's empty because it's exclusive. And this one says less than, so shade to the left of the number. So again, my shader reads in interval notation are negative infinity to nine halves, parenthesis, yin yin, briquette, six comma infinity, by the parenthesis. All right. And again, what this means is, if, as long as I picked a number, either in this shaded region or in this shaded region, either of those numbers would be fine. Now let's take a look at the second type of compound inequality. The, all right, so the second type is and inequalities. These are compound inequalities where both the individual inequalities must be satisfied for the overall compound inequality to be true. So let's take a look. I want to solve an inequality um, that looks like this. It says 5 is less than or equal to 2x plus 5, which is less than 13. Now this is an and scenario. In the first scenario, I've got 5 is less than or equal to 2x plus 5, but at the same time, 2x plus 5 has to be less than 13. Right? To solve each one, I subtract 5, I get 2x is greater than or equal to 0. Divided by 2, I get this inequality. 0 is less than or equal to x, or x is greater than or equal to 0. I always like to read my inequalities from the x's perspective. On the other inequality, I would subtract that 5 across and get 2x is less than 8. Divided by 2, I get x is less than 4. So ultimately, if I put my two answers on a number line, I would get 0 on the left, 4 on the right. I put a circle here and a circle here. Since 0 is inclusive, he's colored in. Since 4 is exclusive, he stays empty. Now let's take a look at this. x is greater than 0. Well, that says shade to the right side of 0. On the other hand, this says x is less than or equal to 4, or less than 4. That says shade to the left of 4. Well, what part of this number line satisfies both inequalities? Well, it's just this region from here to here. So my overall answer to this is just between 0 and 4. So in interval notation, I would say 0 to 4 with a bracket on the 0 and a parenthesis on the 4. Okay? Now, I'm going to do this problem, uh, a similar type of problem, but I'm going to show you a quicker way of doing it. All right, so to do this problem uh, in a quicker fashion, instead of saying uh, splitting it up into two problems, I'm going to just do it in one, um, one problem using the rule of what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. But in this time, I'm going to have three sides. I have a left side, a middle side, and a right side. So to isolate this x, I'm going to subtract 9 from the middle to get rid of that middle line. But if I do that to the middle, I've got to subtract 9 from the left and from the right. I get 8, sorry. I get 8 is less than negative 4x, which is less than or equal to 26. Now, to get rid of the, to get rid of the negative 4, I divide all three parts by negative 4, and I get negative 2 is, le uh, sorry, is greater than x, which is greater than or equal to negative 13 halves. Now notice, when I divided by the negative 4 here, these two guys had to switch directions, didn't they, right? So ultimately that says negative 13 halves is less than or equal to x, which is less than negative 2. Again, on a number line, I would have negative 13 halves here, 2 here, circle, circle, color in the negative 13 halves, and the shading would be in the middle. So my answer would be negative 13 halves comma 2, with a parenthesis on the two and a bracket on the negative 13. Guys, have a good weekend. We'll talk to you Monday.